piano was ordered by Queen Victoria from the firm of Erra, uh, the London firm of Erra, in 1856. Uh, and it's clear that it was not the first piano that she'd had from that house. And it's certainly the most grand and elaborate that she ever ordered. Victoria and Albert's lives and their life together was absolutely full of music. They were talented uh, players of music. Prince Albert was an organist and a composer and a singer, and Queen Victoria, a very talented soprano. They also both played the piano, and that's where they would make music together. And they wouldn't just play piano music. They would sit down and work their way through the great European symphonic repertoire and operatic repertoire together, and that's how they would uh, amuse themselves at, at home. And one reads in diaries, when they were moving from one residence to another, that almost the most important thing was to remember to take exactly the right sheet music that they would need. It's a revolutionary instrument in, in terms of piano design. Uh, people don't really know the name Sebastian Erard anymore, but in fact, he was really the father of the modern piano, and his designs were so revolutionary, they changed the whole course of piano making. One of the major differences is something called the uh, repetition lever. This great innovation by Erard, known as the double escapement action, is what allowed for this rapid repetition of notes. Previously, instruments just couldn't repeat a note as quickly because you had to, the pianist had to wait for the key to rise to its full rest position before they could play the note again. Now, with the, the double escapement lever, you could repeat a note almost instantaneously. You, you see here, the, I can repeat a note when the, the key has hardly risen back up to its position. And this innovation led the way for the great virtuoso penis of the 19th century. Suddenly they could repeat notes so much more quickly. And the sound of this kind of piano is completely different from today's big modern concert Steinway. The, the major difference is that, of course, it's quieter, but also the balance between the bass and the treble of this instrument is very different. It's a different character and it's very, very much a contrast where the sound of a modern piano is much more homogenous. My brief was, uh, uh, first of all, to get the piano in decent playing condition again. There was a pretty major structural work that had to be done. The, the tuning plank was, was split and it had to be dealt with in a special way because obviously given the, the complexity and beauty of this, the, this casework, it couldn't be taken apart in the normal way. So it was more like keyhole surgery in fact. There's an intriguing uh, aspect of this piano. In 1839, in her journal, Queen Victoria wrote that she'd sat down uh, in her drawing room with Lord Melbourne, and he had admired her new piano, uh, particularly he liked the monkeys on it. Now that was in 1839, long before this piano existed. But it seems to accord with an account we have uh, much later, in 1856, for removing the decorations of the earlier piano and placing them on the new one. So Queen Victoria so liked this uh, strangely old-fashioned 18th century French style, which is known as sagerie, with monkeys all over it, engaged in musical pursuits, that she actually asked for the decorations of the earlier piano to be laboriously transferred to the new one. On the lid, there's a, a, a brass molding that goes right the way round, and it encloses uh, the outline of, a, of an earlier piano lid, a slightly smaller one, because pianos got bigger and wider as, 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 as time went on. Now, when we uh, actually removed this moulding some years ago to, to see if we could find out how it was done, I must say it was extraordinarily difficult to see the join, and these people were exceptionally good at what they did.
The piano was going into a, an exhibition here at the Queen's Gallery and it had been in the white drawing room for many, many years, most of its life, and over that time, through coal fires and soot, um, it, it had taken on quite a lot of surface dirt, which was a bit beyond a surface clean. There's always complex challenges with any project that comes into the workshop, but with the piano, the aim was to really bring it back to life without too much intervention. And that's the case with all our projects, really, but it, it is done case by case. But with the piano, with the surface dirt, I knew and I was confident that by removing the surface dirt, it would then tie in and match very nicely with the rest of the sides of the piano that hadn't been affected by surface dirt, basically. Each part is treated individually as an individual project. And it's not just the cleaning, it's the retouching, the filling, the sanding back, the regilding of new pieces, um, the final polish as well. There was also an area in the middle of the piano which had seen some damage and that required putting in some new polish. So the final polish had to tie in together. So all these processes take quite a long time. And then putting it all back together also takes time and the whole process took about 12 months. And close up, the piano looks gold and gleaming, but really it still maintains its original layers, it maintains its original authenticity, and it, it just really required the cleaning and the attention to bring it back to life. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that Queen Victoria and Prince Albert would have both played this instrument and probably in this, this very room and probably uh, together. Of course, there were only five years left for Prince Albert at the time it was commissioned. And although I've no doubt they would have played the work of Mendelssohn on the piano, it must be pointed out that he couldn't have played it, he having died uh, much earlier in 1847. But the wonderful thing about his many visits to Buckingham Palace, which were so very informal and frequent in the 1840s, is that on one occasion, as a sort of thank you, uh, he wrote them a specially arranged four-handed version of one of his famous Songs Without Words, the manuscript of which still remains in the Royal Collection. And I would love to think that they played it together on this beautiful piano. Mm -hmm. 